Welcome to Brit Lab Cinema Science, the show that runs cliched movie scenes through some strict science inspection to see if they can take the scrutiny. This week, we're looking at that handy weapon of many an on-screen hero, the single knockout punch. Get off the side. According to the movies, all it takes to render a man unconscious is a quick bop on the head. And bingo. They're sleeping like a baby. Handily, they'll often stay asleep for as long as it takes for the hero to carry out any important business. Sometimes, the unsuspecting snoozer can even be lugged into a cupboard or the boot of a car, where they'll stay quiet as a mouse for several hours until they bounce up again as if they've just taken a Sunday afternoon snooze. So what is really happening if you're unlucky enough to take a blow to the head? And is it really as simple as just sleeping it off? Inside the protective casing of bone known as the skull lies the brain a soft, squishy, delicate organ consisting mostly of blood vessels and nerves bathed in fluid. Experts believe that how the brain responds to a blow depends less on the power of the strike and more on how the skull rotates in response to it. When the head suddenly spins around in response to a punch, after a fraction of a second it will come to a stop because of the muscles and tendons in the neck preventing it from rotating any further. Now, because the brain is floating in fluid, it decelerates faster than the rest of the head, causing it to come crashing into the side of the skull when the head stops moving. The brain then bounces off the inside of the skull and slams into the other side. And this bouncing back and forth can happen several times before the brain comes to a complete stop. Bouncing around like this causes trauma to the brain. And if both sides of the brain suffer a severe enough bashing, this can cause loss of consciousness. Snapping a person's head around can also cause a knockout through damaging an area at the base of the brain called the brainstem, squashing the nerves and blood vessels leading to the brain. So the chances are, if you bop someone pretty hard on the top of the head, whilst it'll hurt a fair bit, they're unlikely to pass out. It turns out that the chin is a good place to aim a punch to have maximum chance of a knockout effect, as a blow to the jaw will cause greatest rotation of the head and maximum brain bouncing. But please don't test this out. Here at Cinema Science, we like it when people are nice to each other. Also, there's a pretty fine line between knocking someone out and outright killing them. And even if they do survive, you could cause them pretty severe brain damage. A knockout blow triggers a neurochemical reaction in the brain that causes cell death. The harder the blow and the longer you're out cold for, the more brain cells die and the fewer you have left. People are usually knocked out for a few seconds, perhaps even minutes. Any longer than this, and you're probably looking at permanent brain damage or even death. Victims of knockouts can be left with memory problems, mood changes, confusion, and slower information processing speed. So next time you see James Bond karate chopping his way through an evil lair, just remember, he really shouldn't be knocking anyone out. And those he does may well be left permanently brain damaged. And people call him the good guy. So which films show more realistic fisticuffs? This scene in Fight Club shows us that hitting someone may not always be as effective as we'd like. In fact, the part it mostly hurts is the hand. So we'll give it a cinema science thumbs up. Do you have any favourite knockout scenes to share? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe for some more great science from BritLab.